Today's topic is our top 10 tips for hobbyists. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Way Pam. I'm Cal. And I'm Sunny. Today we're going to be going over our tips, and the reason we're doing this is because we've been doing some pretty heavy topics. Yeah, some pretty in depth heavy topics. So, let's start off with number one building muscle memory. Have you seen that grim dank meme with Squidward and he's looking at the airbrush and he's like, no thanks. Yeah, the skills of a surgeon one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can throw that one in. It's something that drives me absolutely bonkers. Just just crazy because the the thing is that painting is a physical skill. Yeah, that's right. Just like with any other skill you've got to work at it you've got to practice at it i think the reason is is because of warhammer's expense more recently the only people who can really get into it are usually professionals right yeah the models are getting quite complicated some of the time (laughs) well i'm not talking about complication i'm just talking about expense right and so these people are usually learned people and they come in and they go I do what I do with everything else. I research. And the more I research, the better I get. Whereas anybody who works with their hands goes, "Uh That's not true. Yes. And the best advice we can give when it comes to practicing those muscle memories is setting aside at least one hour a day, if you can, to do some level of painting. I won't say that you have to set aside one hour a day, but what I will say is this. If you don't use it, you you lose lose it. it. Number two. Despondency is dangerous. So I have put this in more technical terms like avoid upwards comparison. However, I think despondency is dangerous is much better phrasing. And this comes from one of our community members. Yeah. So essentially don't compare yourself with someone who is of a higher skill level than you. Compare your work to how you were previously and how you are now. It is so easy to fall into the trap of upwards comparison. Upwards comparison is where you compare yourself to somebody who's more skilled, more famous, more wealthy, more attractive whatever it might be it's where you compare yourself to somebody who you consider to be better than you and the reason why this can be such a disaster is it can be demotivating yeah it can completely stop you from wanting to paint it can take away all your passion but for some people it can be motivating but they are very much the minority yeah But this is where I think I went wrong. It's not just upwards comparison. It's whenever you become despondent, dispassionate, whenever you lose your love of the hobby, Mm. that's dangerous. Yeah, and I think that's why it's very important to understand and remember what your goals and purposes are with hobbying. Are you painting to do an army? Are you painting to produce beautiful works of art all the time? You have to have the goal so that you don't lose yourself in despondency yeah exactly so if you're painting a showcase model just remember you can take your time you can take Mm. all the time in the world if you're painting an army don't worry that it's not the best in the world you're trying to get this stuff on the table you're trying to do it for speed yeah he's the fastest thing alive i don't know i'm pretty happy with the speed you go at yeah well i think i could really improve my paintings oh right Number three. (laughs) Cost is king. And what we mean by this is that there are some times where you can cheap out and other times where you have to pay through the nose. Yeah, like for example, don't cheap out on your paints. And don't cheap out on your brushes. But there are clippers out there. There are blades out there you can get which are just as fine as anything that Warhammer produces. Sometimes even better for a fraction of the cost. Yes, yes. Because these companies have been doing it for a lot longer than Warhammer has. Yeah, and some of the times I think you got to remember that Warhammer is trying to make a profit, yes, And there are other people who have been out here for a very long time, like Windsor & Newton. Oh, yeah. They're a very established paints company. Yeah, and their sable brushes, I'm sorry, but they're just the best. They are. And they have a price tag that matches. Yeah, well, sable brushes are expensive. They are. But I think that's it for this. Some things you can cheap out on, and some things you got to pay through the nose. 
Number four. Start with the fundamentals. And what we mean by this is probably our most controversial thing that we have said. Don't Don't start with with contrast contrast paints. Like, honestly, you're going to recommend people GW's most varied, least consistent paint range for people to start out with. Is this honestly... What the internet's number one thing is. Because like some of the times the tints, they're too light to even show. And with contrast, they dry super fast. And you can only test it once it goes on the model. You don't know how it looks until you actually paint it. Yeah, because it's designed to go into textures and into things, right? So if you've got it on a palette, yeah. that's not going to show you anything. And then sometimes once you've painted it on, it doesn't look good. And then you f- you can't fix it. If you start with just standard layer paint, what you can do is, all right, okay, I made a mistake. I'll go back over it. When it comes to contrast paint, you don't have that kind of ability. Yeah, you You can't just put more contrast paint on it. It just makes it worse. Yeah, well, often that is the case. But even worse than that, some of the times if you try and wick it off and you've been too slow, it will tear the paint and layers of paint will come up. Does that sound great for beginners? Nope. Is this what you guys are recommending? Okay. All right. Sure. I guess I guess we're not that smart. <laughs> Number five. Practice makes permanence. All right. I think I actually need you to explain this one. Yeah. So everyone's heard that practice makes perfect, but it actually makes permanence. So you can practice the right things and become really good at it. Or you could practice the wrong things and become really good at that too. So you're just saying like, whatever you practice is whatever you're going to continue to do forever. Yes, yes. So let's say that you focus on black lining and you continue to focus on black lining. That's something that you're always going to do. And it might not always be the best for certain things, stuff like that. Yeah, so it depends on whether or not you're improving by researching the better technique to do it. Oh, right. So you might like have very, like say, thick black lines with your black lining and you'll get really, really good at making those nice, thick lines yes. but you you want very thin line like, that's yeah, correct okay. it seems we have been interrupted i guess that means it's time for number six let there be light yes lighting is one of the most important factors of hobbying yeah no seriously it is perhaps the biggest factor on what will make you a better painter instantly. Yes, especially when you're working with such teeny tiny details and models, you'll end up squinting your eyes a lot and causing yourself eye strain without even knowing it. Yeah, well, I think it's not about the squinting. I think it's about just the eye strain. It doesn't necessarily need to have those physical factors for you to be able to notice. You might just come out of it and have a headache or something, or just afterwards you feel really demotivated, something like that, and just having a better lamp. Yeah. Having a better lamp. It, it's like... Uh, it just makes your painting experience that much better. You should invest in a good lamp. Yeah. Like, uh, have you heard of those things called sad lamps? No. They are the worst named product in history. So sad lamps are meant to uh, help people with sunlight deficiency. Oh. Okay. And they make people happier. Okay. Right? And they're called sad lamps. And like, this is what I'm saying, right? It's not until you make that change will you notice it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, I don't think sad lamps are for painting. I think it's very much for a different thing, but I just wanted to make the parallel. Number seven. No, what motivates you? What motivates people is different from person to person. While the majority of people might have certain things that motivate them, it might not be the same for you. Is this the same as identifying what is your purpose and goal with hobbying? No, not exactly. Like, for example, let's say showing off your models is something that brings you joy. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, like that, that is what's motivating you. Let's say having like everything in a nice, neat display case. It's not the showing of things. It's just having that all ordered. Yeah, so that you can just see everything in front of you. It's like, oh, look at all this stuff that I've done. Yeah, it's having that sense of purpose, that sense of achievement. Accomplishment. Yeah, that's the one. What motivates me in painting is usually the ability to be creative. Mm -hmm. So I want to come up with my own color scheme, my own theme, everything. 
everything. And if I can do that, I'm very motivated to paint. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's different for everyone. I wanted to show my stuff off, right? Whereas you want to make something that is uniquely yours. Yes. So I think it's important to see what motivates you and continue to do that. Right. Right. So if you want people to see it, show it to people. But show it to people who actually care. <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest tip. <laughs> Number eight. Permanence is practical. And what we mean by that is set up an area for you to paint, right? It doesn't have to be a large area. It can just be a corner in your apartment. Yeah, if just a got... designated space for you to sit down and paint. Don't move it. Don't do nothing. Just keep it there so you have a place to go to when you want to paint. And we know that some people don't have a lot of space. If that's the case, have maybe like a quick setup kit or something mm. like that where you've got everything together so that you can almost instantly start painting. Exactly. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Number nine. Everybody's laughing until someone is crying. Now, what we mean by this is it's a bit unusual, but watch what you listen to watch what you watch while you're painting because if you're listening to a comedy oh i think i know where this yeah, one's going it can turn into a tragedy if you bust a gut while you're trying to paint an eye and then suddenly the line goes all the way down the nose and it looks like a giant snot <laughs> but yeah like the the thing is just just be aware that's about it yeah that's why you'll never go wrong with grimdark narration. Everything is terrible in the 41st millennium. Honey, what, and, what are you doing? Uh, it's a bit. What are you doing? <laughs> Number 10. All right, guys, this one's super, super important and you should be doing it all the time. And that is... Keep, keep those brushes wet. Bye-bye. In the grim darkness of the future, there is only turnips. And this is why no one takes gaming seriously. I'm actually referencing a real war game. Okay. What, really? Yeah. Oh.